Hello, my name is Keith Rucker. So, um, I've been working this past weekend on restoring this Oliver sea fence that you see here in front of me. And uh, as you can tell, I've made a lot of progress. Uh, I got home uh, after I had shot a bunch of video and after I got back home and started pulling my video down to edit, I realized that unfortunately I lost some of the video, particularly in the early stages of this restoration. And for that, you have my apologies. I have no excuses. In fact, I'm not even exactly sure what happened right now, but I do know that uh, some of that video got lost uh, in transition. So um, before we get into it, even though we lost some video, I felt like it was uh, worth still trying to, to put together uh, what I do have and show you some of the stuff that we did in this restoration project. Um, so um, I'm gonna just talk a little bit up front about what we did and some of the stuff that you missed. And, uh, and then get into the video. And uh, again, we actually lost some video throughout the day, but there's enough good stuff there. I think it still makes worthwhile trying to show video. So you see the fence and uh, you remember what it looked like when we started with. This thing was in terrible shape. Um, all the steel parts on it were just really rusted beyond uh, being able to save. Um, and the first thing we did was we just started taking this thing apart and um, it was it was quite challenging and you'll get to see some of that in the video. Uh, what you won't get to see though is me removing uh, the, the metal tube uh, that goes through this. So this tube fits on this piece here and, and the back part here fit on there. You can see the shiny part. That was the parts that were inside of this and that was protected. Everything that's uh, rusted up, I mean there is severe pitting. I mean pitting an eighth of an inch deep in places on this uh, where it was left out to the elements. So this was basically uh, just kind of a press fit up on the, the, uh, the, the fence part here and there's a tapered pin going through here. I was able to knock that out and between the press and a little bit of tapping it with a hammer, uh, we were able to remove the tube. It actually came off pretty easily, uh, all things considered. And same thing, uh, did a little bit of pressing work to get uh, the tube out of these pieces here. Um, and then with that, uh, you know, I just took the, the fence part here that was all rusted up. Uh, we put it in the bead blaster and just started trying to clean it up and get at least the, the thick scaly rust off of this so we could start disassembling it. And that's kind of where the video is going to pick up is there. But I did want to just real briefly mention uh, some of the stuff that unfortunately we lost on video that you won't get to see. Uh, this video is probably going to be separated into two parts um, uh, just because of the length. And uh, I'm, as you can tell, we're pretty actually pretty far along in the restoration when I'm shooting the, our, the introduction, and uh, it's going well. I think we're going to have a very nice, uh, a very nice uh, project when we get through. So let's get to the action and let you guys see what what, we, what all we did in restoring the sea fence. So I had the bead blaster and uh, cleaned up at least in this area that I'm going to be working in. We'll probably put it back in and finish cleaning it up later, but this is good enough to get started on. So first thing I want to do is try to take uh, these little levers apart here. Let's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to break loose. That one's going to break loose. Let's see if we can uh, get them loosened up. Here we go. And I'm just going to take these all the way out. And that one. Those are, um, yeah, I'm going to probably remake them. Um, they're not terrible, but they are pitted up a little bit more than I like. And uh, anyway, we, we may change my, I may change my mind on that. We'll, we'll see, but I'm probably gonna remake them. I gotta make one for another part anyway, so let's see. All right, so now we need to try to get these rods out. Uh, there's two pins, I can see it here, and two pins in here. So let me get a punch and see if we can knock those pins out. All right, let's see what happens on this side. Try not to get that in front of the camera. There, that one goes out. There we go. All right, we reposition this. 
This is coming out pretty good. Let's see, hope it continues on here. All right. All right, so you can see how much that metal eroded away, rusted away there in the middle. I see that all the time. Never ceases to amaze me. All right, so now there are two pins again in here. All right, that one came out. And there isn't one on the other side, okay. Only one pin on that one. And We're going to take these cast iron parts now, take them back to the bead blaster, get them cleaned up really well. I'll probably go ahead and paint these um, and uh, these two rods. This is just some three quarter inch um, cold roll steel, I guess. Um, I think I've got some of that out here. We'll go ahead and put these in here, drill new uh, holes, and uh, I got some tapered reamers and we'll ream those out to put new pins in. So. Um, We'll go ahead and finish knocking this uh, this part out anyway. All right, quick update here. Um, we put the parts back in the bead blaster. I have put a coat of paint on it. I'm waiting on this to dry right now. Uh, while I'm waiting on the dry, I also went ahead and, and cut some new rods here that are just some three quarter inch cold roll steel. Uh, matched the length and uh, I faced the ends and just put a little chamfer on them. Uh, no big deal at all. So um, I'm waiting on my paint to dry right now. Uh, so I figure I'll go ahead and, and make these some new of these little uh, uh, adjustment screws or tightening screws. So I took this one apart uh, and basically the way it is is you know you got this piece here uh, this piece comes in here that, that is your turning piece and uh, on the end it's turned down to a shoulder and that's just pressed on there that's a press fit and uh, that puts that cap on there so uh, we're going to make a copy out of these I got some this is three quarter inch um, I just got a piece of a uh, little short piece of one inch diameter scrap in the lathe right now and uh, we're going to turn this part out and uh, then we'll go ahead and make uh, the stem. We'll go ahead and make both of these. There's uh, two different two different pieces. They're slightly different from one another, uh, but basically the same type setup. So we'll go ahead and make these uh, to be ready while we're waiting on the paint and dry.
have the components made now. So here's the uh, actual uh, screw. There's the T-handle that fits down in there. Uh, notice we've got that angle on the end there. And uh, this piece here is going to press fit on the other side. I've turned this down about a thousandth and a half larger than the hole. So that should press down in there hopefully. And uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is because we have this contour on this side, I'm going to put this kind of down in a nut to just kind of hold it in place. And uh, same thing up here, I've got just a block of steel. There's a hole in the top of this, so I've got a block of steel here that will kind of hold that in place. And I need an extra hand, but maybe we can make this work. Line all that up. Get it going more or less straight. I think that's it. And let's see if it'll press in there. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so everything is together now. And uh, on this end down here, I'm just going to go over to the grinder and just kind of hand grind that uh, angle uh, to get it all the way around and flush. Um, I kind of did that on this end here too to finish it up and that turned out good. So I'll just hand grind that and I think we'll have this uh, lock knob finished up. One more step knocked out here. Uh, we got both of these made. I only did one of them on camera but the procedure was basically the same for this other one. So now instead of these old nasty rusty pitted looking uh, pieces we got nice clean uh, smooth look one. So this one uh, fits in here and this just basically uh, clamps this bar here in place. Of course right now I don't have my pins in here so it's, it's still a able to spin but that right there will uh, just clamp on that rod and keep that uh, piece locked in place right there. Uh, this one here goes up in this hole down here on the bottom uh, it basically does the same thing. Oh, wrong place. Here we go. Um, it basically does the same thing, uh, except on this one. This one here is clamping on on the entire outside. This one, the set screw goes right into it. So there's actually a little brass uh, piece down in the bottom of this so that you're not clamping steel on steel and marring up that surface. So, uh, But this uh, will go in here and basically press against that little piece of brass or maybe bronze, I'm not sure, but a softer material, could even be copper. Um, but that right there will prevent that piece from uh, turning uh, once it gets clamped down. So anyway, one more step done. Uh, next step I think we're going to drill and uh, go ahead and get the uh, taper pins back in on that. And we're probably going to do that on the horizontal mill because uh, it's just going to be easier to clamp this entire piece down flat and uh, come in from the side rather than trying to do it uh, going up and down on the on the vertical mill. So we'll uh, get set up for that. We've got the fence set up on the horizontal mill now ready to uh, bore these holes out for the uh, tapered pins and uh, I just clamped the fence straight down to the table. That's my best uh, mounting surface that I have is the fence itself and uh, that gives me a nice horizontal bore here that we can do on the mill. And I just adjusted this so that uh, it's lined up through the hole and I got my drill bit in there to line up on. And uh, everything's tightened down now. We've tightened down uh, our, our screw here. So this should be pretty much ready to go. I'm going to pull that out and we'll uh, put the shaft back through here. And I'll go ahead and clamp this one down as well. Keep it from moving while we're pouring and uh, we should be ready to go. So we're just going to punch that hole right through there and uh, ream it out. And I'm just going to manually feed this in using the uh, hand wheel. If I wanted to, I could use the automatic feed for this, but we'll use the hand wheel.
All right, pins are installed. I think that's probably enough for this video. So we're going to call the the fence part of this uh, restored. So we have uh, replaced the the pins in here. We have made new uh, lock pieces in here. We've uh, bead blasted it, got it all painted. So this part is done. Uh, I still have some more work to do. I'm going to do this in another video, uh, mainly because I don't have all my parts here yet. So. Um, we got the tube that goes in here, and I've, I've got a piece of tubing ordered. I'm going to have to uh, cut it down just a little bit. I couldn't find one the exact right size, uh, but we got that coming. And then we got the rest of the little C fence, C frame fence. All that needs to be cleaned up, restored, and also some new parts made. We got the uh, little micrometer adjustment on there, and some lock pins that we'll have to make uh, on the lathe, uh, and uh, we'll be doing that, like I said, in a separate video. But the fence is well toward being restored. Um, we're counting down a little less than two weeks before everybody's going to be here. So I want to at least have the fence ready to go because like I said before, there's just a lot of work involved in this. Uh, a lot of lathe work, a lot of machine work, and I, I wanted to get this part of it knocked out so we can concentrate on the main part of the saw. So that's all for this episode. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching and I want to thank all my subscribers out there who have subscribed. Uh, my subscriber list just continues to grow, and uh, I appreciate that, uh, and I appreciate all your comments, guys. Like I've said before, it's your comments that, uh, that I really appreciate reading those. I don't get to reply to all of them, but I read every one of them, and it's your comments that, quite honestly, keep me doing what I'm doing and keeping these, keep posting these videos, so uh, thank you so much for, for giving me that positive feedback. Mm -hmm.